Hi, I'm Dr Mary Carr, Chief Veterinary Officer of South Australia, and I'm pleased to welcome you to the Red Meat and Wool Growth Program production, brought to you by the Department of Primary Industries and Regions, Livestock SA, Animal Health Australia, and the University of Adelaide. Today we are exploring the Enhanced Abattoir Surveillance Program with a focus on grass seeds. Enhanced Abattoir Surveillance tracks the health conditions of sheep found at the abattoir. These findings are provided to producers to assist with planning around prevention and management of prevalent animal health conditions. Grass seeds lesions is a condition that comes and goes in South Australian abattoirs according to the region of origin and according to the season. Over the last three years, one in ten properties in South Australia submitted sheep with grass seeds and one in 30 consignment had reported cases. At the animal level, approximately one in every 60 slaughtered sheep would have grass seeds. Since the late 2000s, we had an increase in grass seeds frequency at the abattoir with a peak in 2012-2013. Since then, we observe a very strong but steady decrease in finding grass seeds at the abattoir, suggesting that we have a very good management of this condition within the state. Grass seeds is very property and mob specific. Within an affected mob, you can find on average two out of five sheep having grass seed lesions. Grass seed is also very clustered within the greater southeast region and has a very strong seasonality where you're going to find most of the grass seed cases during the summer and autumn seasons. Grass seed uh, contamination of the carcass is very common in South Australia I think, and for that matter nationally it represents something like 50 million dollars a year annual loss uh, to the sheep industry, uh, associated with a number of different grasses. So it can be spear grass, brown grass, barley grass, silver grass, uh, wild geranium, a Chilean needle grass. So there's a whole lot of different uh, penetrating grass seeds that can cause problems. So what happens is the grass seeds uh, lodge in the wool and within a day or two they've worked themselves in through the, the lining of the skin and result in a significant irritation. So as little as 25 grass seeds can cause a significant production loss apart from causing significant irritation uh, and so it's probably a bit like us having a toothache or a headache that puts the animal off uh, grazing or eating and so they can once again lose several kilograms in growth rate over time. Grass seeds often also cause infections uh, to track in with the grass seed through the skin so you end up with abscesses, uh, probably not dissimilar to for example cheesy gland but some of those abscesses um, uh, may appear different because it's an infection associated with grass seeds. The primary welfare issue is that um, you know, as little as 25 grass seeds per sheep can cause some um, significant irritation, pain, uh, discomfort and suffering. If they keep penetrating they can also cause um, internal uh, abscesses as well. But that's why we see uh, a lot of production loss and of course it also results in significant carcass trimming when those animals go to slaughter. In some ways they're a bit like cheesy gland in that in uh, inapparent infection most of the time. You might see the lambs or, or for that matter adult sheep showing discomfort. It's not generally something that people pick up on in that it causes significant irritation, rubbing. So you may see the animals have chewed their wool or rubbed uh, and which would normally be associated with a lice infestation but it, it could be grass seeds. Producers should recognise that a paddock is seedy. Uh, a lot of grass seeds around if uh, livestock are in that paddock. Uh, and two, I, I guess the feedback from the abattoirs. So sometimes people will send off a, a ute load of uh, lambs for example for a um, sample slaughtering to see if there's any evidence of uh, grass seeds uh, and that will determine whether they can then send off a, a larger consignment. That sample consignment may be the first way it might be recognised. Grass seeds present on the carcass always on the outside and they range from minor grass seeds to infected grass seeds which is considered a pathological condition. For the process of the impact of grass seeds is that they have to severely trim all the outside of the carcass which basically uh, ruins nearly all of the primal cuts that they're going to try and recover. For the producer the impact on this carcass is that he will get less weight over the scales because of the heavy trimming. The carcass will be downgraded so he won't get paid the premium price for it. 
The inspectors are trained to look for the presence of grass seeds and in particular infected grass seeds, all of which go onto the retain vial to be trimmed out before it goes over the scales. Our experience with grass seeds on this property is that they can be an issue every year if you're not vigilant on what you do. So we've in, employed a lot of uh, different tactics to try and beat the grass seeds. Uh, we do a lot of physical slashing. Uh, we try and shear at seed drop and manage lambs so that they're not on seed when it's um, flying. Because that period for us of eight weeks from seed drop through to just after Christmas uh, are murder on lambs. So unless you're really vigilant, you can have issues. Um, we haven't had issues here for 20 years, but it's certainly come up in the enhanced abattoir surveillance prior to that. The underlying condition of cost in seed infiltration in the sheep's carcass can be as high as $25 to $30 a head, depending on the weight of your carcass. Yeah, that, that's, that's painful when you think you're sending off clean lambs. There are a range of management options for dealing with grass seeds. It may be a case of um, heavy grazing before seed set. For example, typically barley grass or silver grass doesn't have a chance to set seed. Uh, so you're reducing the risk that way. It may be just a case of avoiding uh, seedy paddocks uh, where we do know that there's a, a lot of, um, of the common grasses present. Uh, otherwise you may change your management to lamb earlier so that the lambs can be turned off before grass seeds become a problem. So for example you may be turning your lambs off in September, early October be before grass seeds uh, become an issue. The next step is uh, perhaps talking to your agronomist and looking at um, herbicides to uh, control grass seeds by spraying it out, uh, preventing uh, grass seed set. Uh, you can also look at um, fertiliser regimes where you're encouraging the more productive uh, non-seedy grasses to, um, to get a better foothold in the paddock. Uh, that might be including perennials if you've got that option. In terms of treatment, there's really no, no options for grass seeds. As I say, often it's an inapparent infection because it's covered by the wool. Uh, you won't see it until the skin and the wool is taken off and you'll see the grass seeds penetrating the carcass. Uh, and you, know, you might say, see some micro abscessation or abscesses in, in the skin, but um, really there's little point in an antibiotic treatment at that stage because it's uh, already too late. Having grass seed infestation in livestock is, is not very nice and certainly dealing with it afterwards is not nice either. Having to shear bellies and jowls off sheep that are just absolutely loaded with seed is not much fun and it's certainly not much fun for the lamb or sheep either. Between 2007 and 2021, the Department of Primary Industries and Regions managed the Enhanced Abattoir Surveillance Program at Lobethal and Murray Bridge. With funding from the State and National Sheep Industry Funds and National Industry Funding from Meat and Livestock Australia, it was the EAS program that provided producers with the feedback discussed in this video. Although EAS monitoring has ceased, there are plans in place to transition to entering South Australian data into the national system. This national data can inform the development and funding of appropriate industry and government initiatives on the ground to better support South Australian producers to reduce losses caused by unnecessary carcass trimming and to take advantage of premium markets. To assist producers, Animal Health Australia has partnered with PERSA to create the Sheep Health Conditions Carcass Impacts Tool a 3D digital tool designed to show the industry what six common conditions look like on a carcass and give them an idea of how much trim may occur at the processor. Livestock SA encourages all producers to talk to their processors about what carcass and disease and condition data they can access from their consignments. Thanks for watching. We hope you have learned more about grass seeds and the importance of managing sheep health with the help of enhanced abattoir surveillance. To find out more or get support with your business, contact your local animal health advisor from the Department of Primary Industries and Regions or the South Australian Livestock Biosecurity Extension Team through the Livestock SA office. The Red Meat and Wool Growth Program is an initiative of the Government of South Australia and supported by Meat and Livestock Australia, the South Australian Sheep and Cattle Industry Funds and Sheep Connect SA.